hopeful as the country comes together to support the people of Nova Scotia after the horrific events of this past weekend, we want to turn now to someone who has always been a calming and, su and supportive voice in Atlantic Canada. I want to bring in Steve Murphy, who has anchored the news from Halifax for the last 27 years. My friend Steve Murphy, uh, you know, looking at those, um, those pictures of the sunset, I think a lot of people were turning to social media to share those posts last night. Lindsay, I'm so glad you started with that because, you know, people have long looked to the heavens for signs of hope and inspiration. And the heavens did not disappoint last night. It was, I suppose, it was a symbol to many people that uh, there is still brightness on what has really been a very dark period of time, obviously with the events of the weekend on top of the events of the last six weeks, which we're all experiencing as Canadians, the loss of the physical contact and the close contact that we've always had. So, yeah, no, I think a lot of people took some solace in that. And you've had some wonderful pictures on the broadcast this morning. We've been showing them here as well. It is very symbolic. And uh, I think, once again, the heavens yeah. did not disappoint. And, you know, that's the thing, Steve. When I, I look to my friends in Atlantic Canada, I'm, you know, I was on Facebook and Twitter and just trying to um, support those who I love on the East Coast and seeing the messages of support between one another. And it just feels as though everybody is affected. Everybody knows somebody who knows somebody. Uh, it is that sense of community. And also, you know, living in a time where we are right now, and you mentioned this, this time of COVID-19, where we can't physically reach out, how are communities coming together to support one another? I want to take the first piece of what you said because I think there's great insight in that. Uh, the noted psychiatrist Stan Kutcher, who is now a member of the Canadian Senate, was observing that in small places, and Nova Scotia is a small place, Halifax is a city of 400,000 in a province of less than a million, Nova Scotia is a small place, and in a small place there might be two degrees of separation between any two individuals, two or three. So it's not hard to believe and expect that in these small communities, virtually everyone, virtually everyone knows someone or more than one of the victims who's been involved. Uh, these are really, really small communities of the kind you find everywhere in this country. You know, port a is a place, I don't know if you were, were ever there, Lindsay, but it's down on the Bay of Fundy. There are about 100 people live there normally. Population probably doubles a bit, uh, maybe triples in the summer when the cottagers arrive. But it, it's very typical of a, an agriculture and, and tourism-oriented uh, community. So how do we find ways to communicate? Well, I guess instead of baking the bread and leaving it on the front doorstep, uh, we use our social media devices. There was an online vigil uh, that was staged last night by Quintrell Provo, who's an anti-violence advocate in Halifax. People were out last night lighting candles uh, in the window and at the driveway and so on, finding other ways to uh, share their grief. And there will also be a vigil Friday night. The Prime Minister spoke about it yesterday that is being organized by a group in Colchester County. So we're relying on all of the new contrivances of life to do things that usually involve very intimate expressions of support, hugs and gestures, you know, the baking of food or casseroles and so on, the things that we normally do that we're just not able to do. Steve, I, I think about your career, 27 years at that desk and what you've seen. I mean, I think back to some of the moments like the Swiss air crash, uh, that stands out for me. Uh, and also, of course, the, the murders of those three RCMP officers in 2014 in Moncton. Uh, what is this moment like for you? Well, I, Lindsay, it's, um, you know, pe people come together in times of uh, tragedy like this in ways they never do. Uh, but it is, it's a frustrating thing for all of us because whether you are, you know, a reporter or whether you're just a person trying to sort it all out, the, the questions are all the same. Why would somebody do this? Why does this happen? Why do bad things happen to good people? And uh, the frustration I think we all feel, and I guess we feel this as journalists, and certainly I do, is that quite often there are no answers to those questions, and there are no good answers. Uh, the question that everybody is asking is, why would this happen? And I don't know that there will, will be an answer to it. Obviously, the investigators are going to do their best to try to sort it out. But this is an enormous investigation, 16 crime scenes across an area that stretches sort of in a triangle from port a where it began up to Wentworth, which is headed up toward the New Brunswick border, and all the way down almost to Halifax regional limits. So, you know, it's a huge area, uh, 16 crime scenes, at least 18 victims, and sadly, 
probably more. So getting to the bottom of it is going to take a very long time. And even when the investigation is complete, I think we, 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 we may have to be satisfied with never really knowing why. Yeah, and that's the real tough part in all of this. Um, I want to um, send our love to your team there at CTV Atlantic because I know how hard this is to cover a story like this, and they're doing such a great job, as are you, Steve Murphy, and we do appreciate you taking the time to chat with us this morning. Thank you. I think we've all been touched by those great expressions from across the country, particularly those, those church bells in Alberta. A farewell to Nova Scotia. It's a haunting song at the best of time, let alone the worst of time. Thanks, Steve. We'll be right back.